welcome all to this tour of uh, Radical Amsterdam from the docks to the squats and we'll, uh, we'll start with, uh, with naked power. This building uh, represents a, a maritime power in Amsterdam of course more than, uh, uh, more than, uh, than anything. This was the, uh, the central storehouse of the, uh, of the Dutch Navy. It was built in uh, 1656. So this was facing the waterfront and it was the first thing that people who would travel into Amsterdam would see. And we have many testimonies of how impressed people were by the power and the efficiency of the building because the whole style reflects the idea of managerial efficiency, of calculating, of uh, mathematical precision, uh, uh, and the whole internal structure of the building was, uh, was designed that way. Everything is on it is about power. We have this, the city version of Amsterdam uh, in the center with a crown made of ships, right? ship hulls, uh, uh, and a ship underneath, uh, under her arm, leaning on an anchor. But this, of course, was not only a place symbolic of power, it was also a center of massive resistance because it was the largest workplace in Amsterdam into the 19th uh, century. At its peak productivity, 2,000 people worked in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, the, naval, uh, the naval dockyards. So this was a huge concentration of, uh, of labor. And in the 18th century, it became a center of Amsterdam um, radicalism uh, um, uh, uh, as well. Now radicalism in the early modern period and today, I would say, often of course is, is, um, is expressed in complex uh, ways. The complexest way in which it was express, as expressed by these dockyards is that it became the center of popular orangeism. In a, a nation divided between uh, vying sections of, uh, of the, the ruling class, with the Amsterdam city regions being staunch defenders of what they sometimes called the real freedom um, against the, uh, the oranges. All of the enemies of the shipyard workers were, would be uh, supporters of this, uh, of this uh, um, regime without an orange and without a stadtholder. And that created a dynamic in which popular revolt always took the, uh, took the form of re uh, revol revolt against the regions for an orange who will bring in justice, who will respect the guilds, etc. This changes radically, this political uh, profile, not the radicalism of the neighborhood in the 19th century. But one of the reasons why it changes is that in the 19th century, the Netherlands goes through a severe industrial slump. Shipyard wages are not uh, um, uh, raised between uh, the early 18th century and uh, 1866. And this is the cause for a major strike in the ship, uh, in, in these sh uh, 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 shipwright neighborhoods. So it's a really effective strike and the layout of this part of Amsterdam uh, kind of helps this strike because um, all the workers are concentrated here. The neighborhood connections are really important. Like if you're temporarily unemployed, you get your neighbors to help you out. Um, small streets, um, and also surrounded by drawbridges. So at some point, if they, the owners try to bring in strike breakers from other neighborhoods who are maybe not in solidarity with the strike, then the workers can pull up the drawbridges like they did in 1787 and uh, prevent the strike breakers from coming in. We talked about the, um, the long history of dockyard workers and shipwrights being central to radicalism in Amsterdam, but with the slow and late expansion of capitalism in the 19th century, of course, new groups of workers uh, uh, emerge. The most spectacular moment in transformation of the Dutch labor uh, uh, movement at the end of the 19th century is the entry of the diamond workers. Now the diamond trade is an, ex is, is an expanding uh, uh, um, uh, uh, trade at the end of the 19th century and it brings together two very different groups of workers. Settled Christian uh, uh, Dutch uh, uh, workers on the one hand and a, mass, a massive Jewish proletariat on the, on the, uh, on the uh, other hand. 
and this uh, uh, is built as their headquarters. Now you can see uh, the diamond workers, of course, many of them are not sort of poor proletarians. These were affluent workers and the, the union manages to build a very solid structure based on uh, uh, large-scale uh, funding, steady contributions, uh, and it becomes it immediately enmeshed with the Social Democratic Party, uh, um, uh, uh, and, and they call themselves the first modern union in, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. They are the ones who force uh, 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 the employers to give the first paid uh, week of holiday in, uh, in the country. So they become mainstay, mainstays of social democracy. So not long after their found, uh, founding, six years after, in 1900, they say, we, we need a headquarters. And to show their might and to show their wealth, they say, we'll build it here, <laughs> right in this affluent neighborhood. And they hire the architect who just built the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. We talked about the uh, centrality of this new solidarity formed between the large mass of Jewish workers who lived in this uh, uh, city and, uh, and uh, the, the, the Gentile uh, uh, workers who, uh, uh, and their la uh, labor movements. And in the years that followed, Jews were the mainstay of, the, uh, uh, of all the different wings of the socialists and radical movement in, uh, uh, in uh, Amsterdam. That, of course, was destroyed, was the, uh, ripped apart, uh, and it was ripped apart from here. The Hollandse Schouwburg functioned as the main, uh, um, uh, the first station for deportation uh, for the Amsterdam Jewish uh, population from 1942 till uh, 1943. In total, 104,000 Dutch Jews perished in the concentration uh, 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 camps. Um, about 78,000 of them were from Amsterdam. This statue is the dock worker and it commemorates the 1941 uh, general strike against the deportation of the Jews. The Communist Party was already for some time waiting for an opportunity to call a strike. With, when the Russia started, they decided we will organize a, um, uh, a general uh, uh, strike. And they printed a strike call that is Organize a protest strike in all companies. Fight unitedly against this terror. Demand the immediate release of the arrested Jews. Demand the dissolution of the fascist terror groups. Organize self-defense in the companies and in the neighborhoods. Show solidarity with the suffering Jewish part of the working population. Protect the Jewish children against the Nazi violence. Adopt them into your houses, into your families. Strike, strike, strike. The Nazis had never encountered at, 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 at that moment such a solid strike against them. And they were paralyzed for the entire day. And the paralyzation meant, meant that throughout the industrial cities around Amsterdam, the strike was solid uh, uh, the, day, uh, uh, the day after. And so in 46, um, a communist um, uh, sculpture, uh, sculpture who was actually in the resistance, Marie Andriessen, uh, uh, made this uh, uh, statue, the dog worker that I think sort of, uh, how symbolic is it that that brings together so wonderfully these old traditions of maritime radicalism and the, 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 how this fed into the making of the labor movement at this stage in this, uh, um, uh, uh, this, uh, this important moment of solidarity uh, with, the, with the Jews.
All right, so we've reached the last site of uh, resistance on our tour today. This is the Newmark, the square, and this whole neighborhood around here is also called the Newmark. That's the, the extent of the huge gash that just had to be cut through the neighborhood and the people that had to be evicted in order for this metro to be built. But so people put up a fight against this. Uh, and especially the squats uh, were sites uh, where if there was an eviction happening, uh, a lot of people would swarm around it and would prevent the police from entering the buildings uh, and would prevent um, the evictions and prevent the metro being built. And this is called the Newmarked Riot, the Newmarked Riots, 1975. So uh, that was our tour. <laughs> I hope we were able to show you some side of Amsterdam that you don't get to see that often. And uh, well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah.